Hi and welcome back to another lesson of the TI-84 plus CE student course. In this lesson we're looking at the binomial distribution and this is part of our optional learning section of the course. So in particular we're going to focus in on using our NCR, NPR and factorial calculation um, and also how to use the binome CDF and the binome PDF calculation templates. First example we're going to look at is we're going to decide whether each of the following problem in involves a permutation or a combination and then we're going to go through and work out the answer. So our first one is we've got how many four digit numbers can be made from the digits 2, 3, 5, 6, 7 and 9 if no repetition of digits is allowed. So if we're looking at a four digit number, um, our number 2, 3, 5 and 6 is a very different number to our number 6, 5, 3 and 2. So I can see that the order that those numbers have to go in, in um, is really important. So we're definitely looking at a permutation rather than a combination. So I'm just going to bring up my calculator. Here we go. And I'm going to enter into my maths menu. Um, and then I'm going to go cruise across onto where it says probability. And that's my probability section of that menu. Uh, my permutation, so I'm looking at NPR, uh, so I'm going to press enter on number 2. And then there's there was altogether 6 digits, and I had to choose from 4 in total. So um, altogether there are 360 different ways that those 4 numbers out of 6 could be arranged. My second example has a student has to answer 8 out of 10 questions in an exam and how many choices um, has she got all together. So in this case, if she's just answering 8 out of 10 questions, it doesn't matter which um, of those 8, uh, which of those 10 questions she actually answers. So the order that they come in is not important um, to our scenario. So in this case, I'm looking at a combination instead. Uh, so again, I'm just going to bring my calculator up. Again, into the maths menu, across to probability, um, but in this time, instead of NPR, I'm looking at NCR, where the C stands for combinations. So I had 10 options altogether. I'm picking eight of those combinations. So altogether, there are 45 different ways that that could occur. I could do that same, com I could do that same um, calculation using my actual combination formula if I wanted to. So in this case, I want to bring up my fraction template, alpha, and then x. I'm looking at 10 factorial um, into my maths menu, across to probability number 4 is my factorial, uh, and then I'd be looking at divided by or over 2 factorial number 4, and then 8 factorial again back into that maths menu across to probability number 4 again, and there you go, we can see we come up with 45 again. The other really handy thing that our NCR function can do is uh, give us a list of um, a whole row of our Pascal's triangle. So we can do this by getting um, by using our statistics editor um, and getting into our list. So we're going to go stat, edit, and in our list one we're going to enter all the numbers from, um, we'll do the fifth row of Pascal's triangle, so from 0 through to 5. So we're going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Um, and then if we get out of there and get back into our main menu, so second and mode to quit, um, and we get up our um, NCR again, so again into maths, across to probability, um, and then number three NCR, um, we can put in here, so we're looking at the fifth row, so we're looking at a combination, total thing, total number of elements of five things we're going to pick from, um, and then each of the things that we're going to pick is going to change based on um, what was in that list. So our first one was picking zero things all the way up to picking five things. So we're going to put in there, instead of having one distinct number, we're going to put in our list one. Um, we're going to press enter and that's going to co calculate the number of combinations for all of those elements. So there we can see we get our fifth row of Pascal's triangle, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5 and 1. Okay, so for our next example, we're considering the scenario of shooting a goal in netball. The probability of getting the shot in is 60%. Uh, so the first thing we're going to find is what, our pro what is our probability of getting 7 shots in out of 10? Uh, so first thing we want to think about here is um, what kind of probability we are looking at. So uh, it's a binomial probability scenario because you can either shoot the goal in or not shoot the goal in. There's nothing in between. It's a yes or a no type question. 
Um, so that means that we're going to find this probability by looking at either our binomial PDF or our binomial CDF function. Uh, so this first one here, we're looking at getting seven shots in out of ten. So that's, an, that's a, a discrete value that we're finding exactly looking at seven out of ten. Um, so in that case, we're going to use what's called our binomial PDF. So we can find binomial PDF um, in under our distribution menu in our calculator. So we go second um, vars to bring up our distribution menu, and then it's right at the bottom. So I'm going to use my navigation keys to scroll through and find PDF. Now you notice the next one down from that is CDF. Um, so PDF, that's this is the one we use when we're finding um, the probability of a set value. CDF is if we're finding um, the probability of a couple of values all added together. So I'm going to go into PDF. Um, my trials, that's how many shots I'm taking all together. So that was 10. My probability of success is 0 0.6. Um, and my x value is um, how many shots am I trying to find the probability of? Well, that was 7. Um, so I'm going to paste that into my main screen. And there we go. We get the probability 0 0.21. Uh, we'll round up to three decimal places. 215. Or 21.5% chance of getting that in. Now, just as a point of interest, um, what if I wanted to look at all the different probabilities of, the, of making those 10 shots? Well, there's a really nice way we can do that, and that's using our list function. So I'm going to go into stat, um, into edit, um, and now my list one, I've got all the values from 1 to 10. So this would be the probability of getting zero shots, one shot, two shots, all the way through to getting all 10 in. Um, in my list two, I'm going to now enter um, that binome PDF um, distribution again. Um, so second, distribution, find binome PDF, um, my trials is 10, my probability is still 0 0.6, but in this case now, my x value, I want that to change based on the value that's in my list 1. So I'm going to paste that in, and there we go, we can see each of those probabilities. So uh, the probability of making two shots is 0 0.0106, my probability of making five, um, approximately 20%, uh, my probability of making all 10, 0 0.006. Um, so there you go, that shows you all the probabilities there. Um, now my second example from this question is looking at the probability of getting less than 7 shots in. Um, so we're still going to talk about out of 10. Um, and in this case, if we're looking at less than seven shots, that's adding together the probability of making zero shots, one, two, three, four, five, and six. That's everything that's going to give us less than seven. Um, so in this case, instead of using the PDF, we're going to look at the CDF because that adds together those different probabilities we're after. So back in my calculator, I'm going to go into my distribution menu again. I'm going to find CDF. Um, in this case, now we're looking at 10 trials still. Our probability still remains 0 0.6. But my x value now is going to be 6 um, because I'm finding everything from there and below. Um, I'm going to paste that in. And there we go. We've got a 61.77% chance of um, making anything under 6 shots. It's really handy to note um, that your CDF function will only calculate a less than probability. So um, whatever the number that you enter for your X value there, that's going to be the upper limit. So if you wanted to find the opposite and find what would be the probability of making more than six shots, you would still find the probability of six and under, but then you would take that probability away from one. Um, and that would give you the opposite um, probability of making 7, 8, 9, or 10 shots. All right, so part C asks for um, what's the probability of getting between 3 and 6 shots in, and that kind of follows on from our last idea that we are talking about as well. So how would I do um, between 3 and 6? Well, let's think about which shot values am I interested in. So I'm interested in the probability of getting 3, 4, 5, and 6. Um, so I want to eliminate all those other values around those. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my distribution menu, um, again, binomial CDF, and I'm going to find my probability of everything that's less than 6. So that's, again, going to leave me with the probability of everything from 0 all the way up to 6. 
Um, then, and I'm going to, I'm not going to worry about going back in my distribution menu this time. I'm just going to copy this command down um, and I'm going to change that last value to true. So that's my X value there that I'm changing. So I'm going to change that X value to true. Um, and what that's going to tell me is what's my probability of making zero, one or two shots. There, we can see that there. And now if I work out the difference between these two values, so I'm going to work out, so there's my probability that um, of six and less. And then I'm going to minus my probability of two and less from that. And that's going to leave me with my remaining probability, which is just going to be six, five, four, and three. So there we go. We can see it there. If you're interested in, in checking that answer as well, there, I, there is a nice way that we can do that using that same list uh, thing that we did before. So again, I'm just going to go into that list just to have a look. And if we were looking at our probability of um, 3 to 6, we can see that our probability of making 3 shots, that's entered into the fourth space in our list 2, and then up to 6, which is entered into the seventh space in our list 2. So if we go into the main screen again now, um, I can get up my list operations by going second stat um, into maths. Um, and I'm going to look at the sum this time. Um, and it's going to be the sum of my list two. And I want to add together everything from the fourth cell up to the seventh cell. Um, press enter. And there we go. We can see we get the exact same probability as we did um, from that um, previous time that we did that question. All right, well, there we go. That's it for today. I'll see you guys next time.